Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new G2 Starter Kit Professional, which is a part of the Unify Access line. So there's been a whole bunch of redesigns within the readers and within the hub. What this video isn't going to be, it won't be an install video, but I do have a job coming up where we have about four doors, so watch out for that. First, I want to thank Ubiquity for sending me the G2 Kit Professional to do a video on. We're going to take a look at what comes inside the box, and then we're going to get it hooked up into Unify Access. Unify Access has had a couple changes within the dashboard, and we'll look at that as well. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. I do have a Discord server and affiliate links down in the description below. Now let's go take a closer look at what comes in the box with the G2 Starter Kit Professional. This is the box for the G2 Starter Kit Professional. We could see that we have the wrapping on it, so let's rip that off. Now on the front, it shows you everything that comes inside the box, but we're gonna open it up. And on the bottom, it's like there's these magnets that hold it down. Ubiquity always does a great job of designing their packaging. So let's open that up and then pop open the cover. Now, after we open up, we see the G2 box mount, we see the G2 reader light, we see the G2 Reader Professional, and then we now see the G2 Hub. So this does have a bit of differences compared to their normal one, and I will put them side by side and show you those differences. Now this Reader light doesn't have a camera on it, but we can do wave to exit and a couple other features. So if you don't care about a camera, it's better to buy these ones. And you can now buy these in either black or white, as well as the Professional Readers. I do have a full other video on the professional reader and I will put that down in the description below. Now, one of the best things about this new professional reader with the G1 reader, if we mounted it at legal height, we were only capturing people's chest when they were walking up to the door. Now this reader, the video on it will actually show the full face of the person. Under the readers, we have our brackets. So let's open that up. We'd see this piece of styrofoam. It says four packaging only, so we don't need that. We'll throw that into the side. And then we have our mount and this mount does feel like it's a metal material. Same thing goes for the reader light and it has these extra clips so that we clip it on and we also have a level to make sure that it's straight. I find that these levels aren't the best so I actually use a level out of my tool bag. Now we have our different mounting kits for gang boxes and let's take a look. So it comes with this big faceplate if you want to put that on and then it comes with another mount. And these mounts are metal and they look really good when they're put on drywall. I have installed a couple of them. The same thing goes for the reader light. We have our white faceplate and then we have our metal receptacle box. Below that, it comes with two Unify Access key fobs. So this probably won't be enough to do your whole company. You can buy 10 of these key fobs for $99 or you could buy their Unify Access NFC cards. Now we'll talk about some ways shortly on how we could enter the doors using UID and this new UID light that's supposed to be coming out. The last thing we have here is our Unify Access hub. So on the cardboard, it's showing us a few things. It's showing us a wiring diagram for the door position with the access lock magnet. We also have the access lock magnet here as well as the access lock electric and below that we have the mount for the access hub that we'd put in a wall or we'd put in an alarm box now i'm going to grab an older hub so that we could compare it we now have both of the unify access hubs in front of us this was the generation one and this is the generation two the first difference is their logo this is the new logo that they are currently using at the top we could also see some changes so we have our power input and then we have spots for both of our readers but we also have one more data jack up top so we could now put in two cameras in the g2 access hub i don't really use the cameras too much and we can now pair it with unify protect cameras so this probably will become irrelevant we still have our reset button and then we have our 12 volt 33 amp below that the naming convention has just changed this one says ren and this one says motion we have our rex which would be our request to exit but on the new one it says button and then we have our dps or we have our door position switch on the very bottom this one says release and this one says emergency so if we're tying into a fire alarm panel on the top right we have dry and this one says no power and then we have this lock so these are all leds and they light up when you put your conductors into the hub below that we still have our 12 volt one amp powered and then we have our dry but this one says door operator and then at the very bottom we have our powered 12 volt 33 amp there is also a different with the mounting on these 
So on the generation one, we have this metal bracket that we could pull down and it would attach to the clip. On the generation two, it's just this plastic. So let's see how it mounts. So on the G1, all we would do is pull down and then we would put the mounting bracket in and it would clip on the wall. With the generation two, it looks like we just slide it into the axis hub and then push it over. So that's pretty easy to do and not a lot of work. Now the next thing that we need to do, we need to get this all hooked up. I do have a Unify Axis electric strike, so I'm going to put that into the 12 volt 1 amp. Our red wire is going to go to the normally open, and then our black wire is going to go into the comm. Now we need to connect an ethernet cable to give this power, and we need to power the hubs up with PoE++ so that we make sure that our readers and all the accessories that we're putting on here get enough power and they don't start shutting down. I'm going to connect this ethernet cable to the power port and this is connected to my mission critical switch which has PoE++. You should be able to see this light going on and off and it is a white light as it's not currently adopted into our controller but we will get to that shortly. Next step is to add our reader so I'm going to plug in another ethernet cable into the back of the reader professional and then we'll plug it into the top of the Unify Axis hub. And it doesn't matter which one of these reader ports that we put it into. Lastly, we're going to do our reader light. We're going to plug an Ethernet cable in, and then we're going to plug it into the reader spot onto the Unify Axis hub. You can now see the white light on the reader light, and we can see the image on the reader pro. So we need to get into Unify Axis and get this adopted. Now we're back to my UDM SE, and you can see that Axis is ready to be set up. And we could also see that the Axis icon has changed to the new G2 Reader Professional. So let's press set up. It says, Welcome to Unify Axis. This module will help you set up your first enterprise security system. We're going to say, I've read and agreed to the terms and services and then press start. Right off the bat, it is noticing that we have one main door, we have a main door entry, and we have a main door exit, and that's what I'm gonna leave it at. This is on floor one. This main door, I'll just call Mac Telecom main door. If you wanted to switch the direction of the readers, you wanted the pro maybe to be your exit reader, you could do that. Same with the light reader, and we'll press next. The next step, it says to register your cards, and we want it on our main door, or you could select the exit for the reader light, and then press next. You need to hold the card up for about five seconds. On step three, it says configure unlock recording. So we're gonna enable video and audio on this. You need to check with your local laws. We would have it at 10 seconds, and you also need to have a hard drive in your UDM SE. All right, so this is the Unify Access dashboard, and we'll come back here in a second. If we go over to devices, we would see location hubs, and it's showing an update on our main door, but it's also showing an update for all of our devices. So if we click over on all, you can see the Reader Lite and the Reader Pro. Let's update all three. Now all three are updated. Let's take a look one by one. This is the main door hub and clicking on it, we could see the camera if we'd want it. And this is from the G2 Professional Reader. So I'll press play on that. And while I'm pressing play on that, you could see my PlayStation and my Xbox and we could also unlock the door. We could unmute the audio and we could use the microphone. I'm gonna click to unlock. Now it did make a sound and I did hear the electric strike unlock. If we needed to, we could power cycle both of these readers directly from the access hub. On the right hand side beside the reader, we could see the port number that it's plugged into and then we could see the port power cycle. This is a great feature if for some reason your reader got hung. And at the bottom, it's the regular stuff, the status, the model, the IP address, MAC address, device version, or the uptime. We also have our insights of who swiped in. So we could see that I just called in and it was Cody McCallum at 9.23 a.m. Under the settings, we have our door name and then we have leave unlocked. So we could have this never unlocked. We could have it always unlocked or we could do a custom schedule. So say from nine to five during working hours. Now say we had our custom schedule, but we didn't want it to unlock until the first person swiped in. And that's what this is right here first person in requirements. We have a couple different door attendants, so that's just some users. If somebody calls into the door, they could swipe to call. The door attendants will get that call. We have our different relays. So we have our input relays, and then we have our output relays, and they have redesigned how this graphic looks, and it's really nice. We have our lock duration, which is 0.1 second all the way up to 60 seconds, as well as our aux and our door operator relay on lock. If we end up putting a siren or a chime, we could change that down below as well. Now for our main entry door, this is the G2 Reader Professional. We could see the camera on it and then we could see all the status information. Going into settings, we could change the direction and then we have our access methods. Currently, we could only use the NFC card, but if we wanted to use a pin, we just check that off 
and then press apply changes. Under the reader light, it has the same information and under settings, we could do the hand wave. So if we wanted to do a hand wave to exit the building, we could do that. One of the biggest features missing from Unify Access is mobile unlock. We'd only been able to do mobile unlock from UID, which was a paid version. Ubiquity is coming out with the UID light, which we're gonna be able to do unlimited users and unlimited doors and use that for mobile unlock. And that will be completely for free. So once that comes out, I'll probably do a full installation video on Unify Access. A change in the Unify Access dashboard is this emergency mode. Currently it's only on one door cause that's all we have hooked up. We used to have to go into the settings click on the emergency mode, and then type in a password. If there was an actual emergency, that would take far too long. I'm gonna click on the emergency mode and we could see that there's two different modes. We have evacuation, so all doors will be automatically unlocked. And then we have lockdown. All doors will be locked. No one could enter or exit. Let's do the lockdown and press activate. Now there's no noise coming from these readers, but you should be able to see at the bottom that it's flashing light on the LED. And it's also doing that on the reader light. To end the lockdown, all we need to do is turn it off. One last thing I'll show you before we end this video is adding a card to a user. So if we click over on the left hand side, this is our users. We could see Cody McCallum, we'll click on that. And then we'll click over on settings. We could say add a card. I'm gonna click add card. And we have two different locations that we could add the card. We could either do it to our exit, which is the reader light, or we could do it to our reader professional, which we're gonna do. And if you need to locate these readers, you could click here. I'm gonna click on the G2 professional and click continue. Now all we need to do is hold the fob up to the reader professional. And now the UA pocket has been detected and assigned to my profile. And that's gonna be it for this video on the G2 Starter Kit Professional. And I really do like the new changes that they've done. The biggest change in my opinion is on the Access Reader G2 Professional with that camera. We could now see a full body. On the G1 Reader, the camera was pretty useless. Another big feature that's supposed to be coming is that UID light where we should be able to have unlimited users, unlimited doors to be able to use mobile unlock. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.